Welcome to Dent Reviews. All right. I did a couple reviews. Don't move. I did a couple reviews recently of the Thigh Audio Monarch MK2, the Moondrop Land, and the Truth Ear Zero Red. And what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to talk about those three IMs that I have here. And I wanted to compare them. Um, I wanted to compare them and contrast them with each other and some of my favorite IMs. This is just going to be a comparison strictly of how they sound with certain music compared to each other, just to give you a sense of, you know, their characteristics and, and how they compare with cost and value and everything. So the first I'm going to start with is the Moondrop Land because it's the least expensive. So I kind of described it in this review as being very uh, linear with a little bit of a forward treble, maybe just a little bit leaning towards a lean, bright sound, but very linear, very great bass, very great treble. Now, the way I would describe the sound with this is if you were listening to a song, I'm just going to pick a couple random songs off the top of my head. Um, if you're listening to a song by BT, like a techno electronic song, one of my favorite BT songs is called Suddenly. It's a great song. Awesome intro with a lot of very precise trebly things going on, very glitchy, fanatical sounding stuff with a nice deep, kicky sub bass and kick drum. These are a little bit, not much, but a little bit on the aggressive sounding side and at high volumes would be kind of fatiguing. So I would definitely recommend these recommend these for maybe a little bit more casual volume and not aggressive volume listening. Um, but they would sound precise. They would sound very well delineated. The instruments would be very tactile and, and hit you in the face and kind of tingle your ears. And it would sound good, but it would just be a little bit on the lean, treble, aggressive side so that those sound effects and that kind of music would be maybe a little bit fatiguing. And then... The Truthier Red Zero would handle it in a little bit of a similar way, but the lower treble is a little more laid back, and the bass is a little bit more full. So what that would allow is the sound to see the sound to be a little bit more balanced in that particular song. So you still have a lot of really precise things. Even more so, you probably would have the sensation that uh, the sharp, transient treble instruments were fine in attack because of the treble shape of the zero there it lends itself a little more more to a sharp transient attack with a relaxed lower treble which gives a little bit more heightened sense of like high deafness to it even though it may not be perfectly neutral it gives things a little bit sharper cutting more treble um, incisive quality and the bass having a little bit thicker like punch to it would make it maybe a little bit easier of a listen than the LAN, a little less aggressive, um, and also maybe just a little bit more energetic sounding. So in a song like that, I think the Zero comes out a little bit ahead. The Monarch MK2, and this is going to probably be a repeating pattern with all of these, but the Monarch MK2 just nails it all. It's not as tactile as the Zero. The Zero is a dynamic driver, single dynamic driver. It's a dual dynamic driver, but it's single driver type. And I feel like the treble is just very, very good in having a very physicality to it, a tactile, dynamic nature. The Monarch lacks that a little bit, and I talked about that in this review. That's its only real downfall. But despite that, the response is perfect. The sub bass hits where it should, and it sounds accurate, and it sounds deep, and it sounds full, and it sounds punchy. The mids sound smooth and, and neutral, and the treble sounds incredibly precise, so all the nuances and precision are there and while it may not be as tactile it sounds just as finely detailed while also being a little bit more easy to listen to so i think even more so in this case the monarch wins now let's take something such as one of my favorite artists ever is david gates from the band bread from the 70s my favorite song of his is never let her go it starts out with an acoustic guitar strumming an electric guitar strumming and then some strings come in some nice bright lush strings and then some acoustic studio drums when this all happens on the LAN, you'll hear the acoustic guitar. It sounds phenomenal. It's great. It sounds really, really proper and correct. And then as the strings come in, they sound just ever so slightly, <clears throat> excuse me, ever so slightly maybe on the nasally side, just a little bit. I think it's a lot of that 4K area for the LAN, but just a little bit on the nasally side. It still sounds great and it sounds good. And then the drums come in and they sound very good. They sound very accurate, sound very precise, but they don't have as much of a low drum kick that I think they should have, like the thud in the kick drum. It's not a thick, bassy song, but it's still, it's not as 
tight and good as it could be, but it's a very good bass. And then the treble, when all the instruments are in and doing their thing, it has a good amount of air to it, but it doesn't have the most air that it should for this song. This song is a very good analog recording that has a lot of nice airy analog quality to it. So I say the land does an exceptional job, but when you go over to the um, Truth Air Zero, in my opinion, this song sounds a little bit darker, which I don't like for this particular song because I think it really benefits from that lower treble, the one to three kilohertz area in the vocals and in some of the strings and drums. They really, it adds to the presence of the instruments and it's subtle but these come across a little bit more subdued there and i don't like that but they also sound a little bit more precise in the upper treble and a little bit deeper in the lower bass so it kind of balances out to say i'd say an equal presentation to the land maybe a little more easier to listen to but maybe not as accurate in the way it sounds representing the 70s analog recording it's still good though very very close then the monarch the monarch is just flawless i mean the only way it could improve again is it could have a little bit more of a tactile sensation with like the snare drum hits and maybe the metallic timbre of the drums could be a little bit more improved if it was like the Kato or something that was a dynamic driver. But even still, even with that said, it boasts better timbre and better overall coherency than the other two sets in this song. It sounds extended with a nice sense of air from the recording from the 70s. It's got just the right amount of bass attack and punch and thud. The strings are lush and warm and smooth, and the whole song is easy to listen to while sounding incredibly precise and resol resolving. And in terms of imaging, the land sounds the most in front of you and flat. The zero sounds a little bit more spacious with some more precise layering. And then the monarch sounds the most 3D and holographic of the three. Um, by far, the Monarch is the one that I'm drawn to for this song. I think it just lends itself perfectly to this type of acoustic recording, and it just it it aces it with spades. So, now let's take a song like uh, a soundtrack. Um, let's say Hans Zimmer, um, Gladiator. Uh, I don't know if you know the battle song from Gladiator. It's a pretty popular soundtrack theme. Great song, very bombastic. has a lot of elements that just get really dramatic and dynamic. And on the land... Again, at good volume, this can sound a little bit aggressive. It's a good, uh, well-portrayed soundstage, and things sound open and spacious. But again, maybe a little bit of the lean side and a little bit aggressive in the treble. In the scheme of things, I just think it's, it's lending itself to a little bit more of a lower volume, maybe. Or if you wanted to EQ it or bass mod it, that might help a little bit. Um, everything sounds a little bit two-dimensional, not in a bad way, but sort of etymotic like Like you have a wall of sound in front of you, a little bit of width, and you have a lot of the drums and things precisely laid out on that sound field. Whereas on the zero on this song, you get a much more strong sense of the bombastic drums having a dynamic attack. You get a much more sense of the strings. Dun, 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 dun. Like everything just kind of hits with a little bit more authority and precision with a little bit more of a 3D sound to it, but not much. And then on the Monarch MK2, once again, it's got a superb sense of air while still sounding relatively soft and neutral, not like overly bright. The bass is superb when it doesn't need to. It doesn't hit low. When it does, it bangs low. Um, the mids are a little bit warmer than the other two sets, and they sound a little bit more full, for lack of better words, um, with more mid detail. A lot of the instruments in the orchestra are pulled out into that sound stage a little bit more based on the frequency response so that you hear things like wind instruments and whatever string elements there are. You, f you hear the midsection of those more, which rounds out the whole picture to give you a more cohesive image of that orchestra. And it also has a little bit more of that 3D imaging and that spacious kind of holographic sound. So again, Monarch MK2 takes the cake here. But they're all phenomenal. I think I, I find it kind of funny in this set of examples i've been consistently ranking it the land the zero and the monarch but in my actual listening i tend to gravitate towards the land more than the zero and maybe that's just because i have a little bit more tolerance for uh nasally treble forward aggressive sort of neutral because if that neutrality means no dips or peaks in a smooth response i would rather have a little bit of a forward-leaning neutrality than a perfectly neutral sound that has some 
dips and peaks, which I think the Zero is a little more guilty of that. Not much, but a little bit more in the treble. Um, so it is what it is. So now let's say you took a song like Dream Theater, um, Scenes from a Memory, like one of the songs where it's like, and a lot of aggressive guitars. Kind of the same thing here. The land sounds great and does well, but the double kick drums and the things like that aren't as, uh, they don't stand out as well as on the other two sets. And again, it has a slightly aggressive treble, which in this actual instance, I like the land because it hits in that lower treble where I think a lot of the Dream Theater guitars have their meat, which I like a lot. So you have a lot more of that from the guitar instead of it having more of a high sound to it. So it's a more fully rounded sounding guitar, whereas on the Zero, that's a little bit more subdued in the lower treble. So the guitar sound a little bit brighter, maybe, but also like brighter on the high end and darker on the low end. So the guitars sound a little bit thinner in body, whereas they have more bass and the song has a little bit more bass presence, which I like, and it makes it easier to listen to. But the guitars themselves sound a little bit more scooped out in the mids, uh, lower treble. But I'd say, relatively speaking, they have strengths and weaknesses that balance each other out. And again, in the Zero versus the Lamb versus the MK2, the MK2 by far is the easiest to listen to. It's smooth, has no overly aggressive response areas, so the guitars sound thick and lush and harsh where they need to be. And I say harsh not as a descriptor of the sound, but the guitar. The guitar has an aggressive treble bite to it. It captures all three of those things simultaneously. The bass and the double kick drum sounds well-rounded, and you get a sense of the little, like, round... I don't know the way to describe this, but if you listen to double kick drum music, the kick drums often has like have a tubbiness to them, like a, a round thumpiness to them, and it captures that really well on the Monarch MK2. So again, clear winner. I could go on and on and on, and I'll just spare you by saying that those are the general trends you're going to hear between these. Now, does the price belie that sound quality difference? I don't know. I mean, the significant difference between the Monarch and the other two, you could argue, is excessive, but it wins in every situation for me. The other two are very close in price, with the land being a little bit cheaper, but I actually tend to prefer the land overall for whatever reason. I just I gravitate to it more than the Zero. Um, it tends to bring out metallic timbre better in instruments, so when you hear cymbals, which are very metallic in nature, the land makes them sound realistically and naturally metallic, the tanginess of it. Whereas the Zero is close, but gives a little bit more of the bright sheen and a little bit less of the metallic body to that timbre. The Zero sounds the most balanced in terms of the response, but does lack a little bit of the textural physicality that the other two have because they're dynamic drivers. But I think it makes up for it in the frequency response by sounding natural and cohesive and there's no dips or peaks or anything like that, so it sounds revealing. So while it lacks the tactile tinginess of it, it represents the frequencies and all the nuances of the sound of the drums and the metal equally well. So I don't think it's worse in a, in a specific way. It's just different. Um, excuse me. So bass, again, listening to songs like, and judge me if you will, but Justin Bieber, the song Take You, I love that. It's like a reference sub bass track for me. Um, when that sub bass comes in, Lan's good, Zero's better, MK2 is the best. Um, Lan has a very linear and tight bass, but it just it comes off sounding a little bit, just a little bit, not balanced with the treble because the treble's a little forward. Now, if you think of it as just a slightly lean neutral, it's still really well balanced, but it just it leaves me wanting just a little bit more in the low bass presence the zero sounds a little bit better in that regard but again the overall response lends itself to a little bit more bass weight in the upper bass region and that makes it sound almost too thick and too full for my liking whereas the mk2 just nails it it doesn't sound too bassy it hits the bass where it needs to it hits it low and the song sounds superb otherwise um same thing if you listen to Russia on Ice from Porcupine Tree, which is a fantastic song. Towards the end of the song, it goes into the whole uh, solo instrumental riff stuff. And right at one part, all the instruments kind of drop out and there's this repeated, repetitive sub-bass drum thing. It goes boom, ch boom, boom, ch boom. And again, it's the same thing. The LAN does incredibly good with it. It just sounds like I wish it was just raised up a little bit in level, but quality-wise it's great. 
The Zero, same thing. Hits it great. Nice, deep. I like it, but it still just pushes it a little far up into the upper bass. And the Zero just nails it. It's a little bit maybe softer sounding in the tonal presentation of the song, like the overall song, while still maintaining that deep sub bass. And the MK2 has a little bit more of that sub bass ring that you would hear with a drum like that. And what I mean is like it hits that boom and it kind of resonates out for a second, like boom, boom, instead of going boom, boom. You hear that ringing a little bit more on the MK2, which is in the recording. It's not a side effect of the sound. It's just it's re re reproducing that sub bass very well with that decay very well. The LAN and the Zero come across as, as a little bit more skewed in that regard. Not skewed like it sounds wrong. It's just the treble and the other characteristics of the IM kind of detract from that tonal quality of the sub bass and how it rings out a little bit like they kind of mask it based on their sharp treble transients and the lower treble presence and just the overall balance kind of makes it harder to appreciate that quality of the sub bass while the mk2 allows you to appreciate that while also having all those other things intact so again mk2 takes the lead so it's not a fair comparison i know thousand dollars sub 100 dollars so Hopefully this at least gives you an idea of how they all compare, especially the LAN and the Zero, how they compare. And then um, the MK2 obviously in my book is better, but like, you know, how much better? You know, it may not be as much better as the $1,000 price tag would suggest, but for me, this definitely takes the cake and is in, in the lead in every aspect, in every situation, except maybe that small metallic technical characteristic that it lacks because it's not a dynamic driver um but other than that it excels the other one i could throw in here just for quick comparison is edemotic um specifically the evo that's probably edemotic's one of their best frequency response iems um the evo is a multi-driver iem rather than like the other edemotics that are single driver which i'm not sure i don't like the evo as much as i like the er4s or the er4xr so maybe there's something to the multi-driver thing i was talking about before but um the evo is a leaner sounding IEM and the bass is not as tactile as any of these, although it has probably the best sub bass of any Edemotic I've heard. It's got a nice sub bass curve. Um, it just sounds a little bit more smooth than all of these. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. It's smooth in response and tonal characteristics, but also it doesn't have as much of the tactile thing that I like with the dynamic drivers and it doesn't have as much of the fully rounded cohesion that the monarch has and what i mean by that is the balance of frequency response the spaciousness the precision all the thing the evo to me doesn't sound like it's as good in all those regards even though it is definitely very good and i like the evo a lot the evo for me i think fails in two key areas one um the base impact is still a balanced armature as far as I, I think it's all balanced armatures so it still lacks that like really tactile deep bass and then the treble is not the perfect linear response of even the ER4S or XR for me I don't know if it's the fit or the tips or what but the Evo just has a slightly less linear and I think it might be around the 7k area some tips are better than others but if I EQ that up to where I think it should be it sounds noticeably noticeably better to me um, so how does it compare to these though I would say it's probably it's in league with the zero and the LAN in a lot of ways, and it might be superior in obviously sound isolation. Maybe frequency response overall is very, very good and more to my liking. Um, but the balanced armature or the multi-driver configuration takes it down a step, whereas the dynamic drivers are a little bit more to my taste for the timbre and the texture. Um, you know, which would I prefer? If the Edemotic was a lot more easy to fit and more comfortable, I think I might give it a lot more listening time, but... As it stands, I prefer the old Edemotic body style significantly. Um, and I have mentioned this many times, but I cannot stand the Edemotic cable for the Evo. It is the worst cable I've ever used in my life. I hate it. And I mean, those things detract me from listening to it. I just don't want to use it. But it does sound good, and it is very competitive with these two, especially because it's much more expensive. You would think, oh, it has to be that much better. Well, I don't actually think it's that much better. It is better in a lot of ways, but the timbre and dynamic nature of these is a huge plus for these. Now, if compared to the Monarch, I just think the Monarch takes everything the Evo does and does it better. And it has dynamic bass. And it has a shallow fit that's more comfortable. And it has a better cable. I'd, so, I mean, I would take this over the Evo any day. But it's twice the price. So, 
choose your poison. So I'm going to end it there. That's just kind of a, a kind of sound characteristic comparison of these three in the Evo. And if you have any question about the way they sound or any questions at all, please leave them below. Subscribe, like this video, and as always, I do appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching.